Hi guys, I'm Ryan Houston and welcome to my Fly Tying channel. If your video is about to start shortly, please take this opportunity to hit the like button down below, leave some comments, tell your friends. Interaction, likes, subscriptions help my channel to grow and help me to keep producing content for yourselves. If you're new to my channel, check out the other videos that I've got. There are over 500 videos at this stage, so there should be something there for everybody. Again, video is about to start. Hit that like button down below. Hi guys, so what we're going to tie tonight is a little uh, double hooked version of a D sheep or a variant of a D sheep. Uh, so this is a size 10 uh, Patriot and I'm using a black tie and thread. So I'm going to take that down to the bifurcation of the hook there. And we're going to put a little tag in. So I'm going to use a glow bright number 12 for this. This is like a chartreuse green glow bright. So I'm going to take my strand, double it around my thread, and then that allows me to slide it down as I'm tying it in. I just want to get it started just at this split of the hooks and creating like a little hot point of it. And then I'm going to go between the legs of the hooks and out over the top and that'll stop it from slipping backwards. And I'll tie this forward. And trim it off. So for a rib on this uh, play, I'm going to use some sort of silver ribbing. Now you could use wire. Uh, or you could use an oval. Uh, some people prefer wires whenever we're using a tinsel body. Uh, so I'm going to use a wire. Start that on the top there and wrap it back until I hit our little butt section that we've made. And just to make the butt more durable, I'm just going to run some clear varnish onto that. So, uh, body on this fly I'm going to use a silver holographic tinsel. So I'm just going to go to the front here and I'm going to tie this in with the tag end of it pointing backwards so that when I fold it over and wrap it back I'll have an underbody of silver which will then cover up any gaps that we should have in the forward run. Tie it on top there, flip it back on itself and tie over that. And that'll secure the tinsel. Follow that up with our rib. thread across that hole to tie in silk tight and then just change the angle of it so it's running up the underneath there and then I can just wiggle that back and forward till it breaks off and that is the body of our fly done so if you're going to tie several of them you probably varnish that as well and set it aside it's up to yourself so, uh, next we're going to put an underwing of uh, bucktail on this. So I'm going to use a yellow bucktail. And the idea is this, because it's a slightly long winged fly, that the uh, stiffness of the bucktail will just give it uh, support to the, uh, to the black portion of the wing. So I'll just take out the short stuff out of this. And... I'm not going to uh, stack this because, because I'm going to have a longer uh, top wing. I don't want it to look unnatural. So I'm going to have this roughly two, two and a half times the length of the body. I'm going to trim that to length, set that in and tighten down onto it. And then I'm just going to take some super glue 
and just run it on a centimeter or so of my tying thread hold my wing in position and wrap over these tag ends of it and that will give me that lowish profile thing. There's a couple of fibers here that I don't like so I'm just going to trim them out of it and I'm going to use my underwing there to support some uh, Mirage tinsel as well here. So I have this uh, Peacock Mirage crinkle tinsel. So I'm going to put a strand of that and double it back and take it out to the length of that underwing. So you can see those two strands in there now. And for the top part of our wing I'm going to use some black fox mask. And specifically what I'm after here are the sort of yard hair portion of this. You don't have this, you could use fox tail or you could use a little bit of goat or whatever comes to hand. So we'll take our bunch, so we've got some good yard hairs on this mask here so I'm going to get rid of quite a bit of the shortest portion here. This I'm going to take out to be longer than our underwing. That'll give us some taper. Again, how long or otherwise you want it is up to yourself, but you could go fairly extreme and we end up like three to four times the length of the hook. So I'm going to trim that to the length that I want and offer it up here to the hook and get a turn across it to hold it in place and then to bind this down same again I'm going to put a run super glue onto my tying thread and wrap over these cut ends that'll soak into them and give us a very secure head. So next I am going to go for my throat. So for this I'm using a blue schlappen feather and I'm looking to create sort of like a chevron sort of at the tip of it. I'm going to lay that underneath. You can see the curvature in this. I'm going to lay that under put a wrap across it and the second one behind the first wrap and then I'm just going to pull this forward and you can see it's starting to dive underneath the tying thread and we can choose how short or otherwise we want the throat to be so now I can either cut this off here or I can fold this back on itself, tie it down. And you don't want to tie it right to the back of the head here. Cut it off just before that and that'll give us a really secure throat that's not going to pull out. So to finish the fly off what we want to do is put uh, some peacock curl over the top of this fly. So for this one I'm using a peacock curl that I have maybe, obviously may not be, I've dyed it in like a chartreuse green that just gives it like a green glow. So we'll take a couple of fibers from each side of the eye because it already has sort of like a natural curve to it. I'm going to set that on. So you can take it right out to the full tip length if you want but I would say I'd probably short, stop slightly short of the length of the wing on this and that will support the uh, hurl which isn't the strongest of materials. side as well. Check the curvature, set them out to the same length and tie them down. 
hopefully they will sit in position. And then a couple of very small jungle cockeyes just to finish this off. So we're going right down here into the sort of 30 sized ones. I'm going to take one from each side of the cape. Strip back the fluff. I'm looking to tie on this first enameled portion here. I'll just hold it in position, take a turn across it and leave it to hang. And then I'll do the same on this side. Now I'm not putting on a lot of turns here and the reason is I don't want to build bulk on the head so I'm just going to push this then to position. So then the next half a wrap of the one that was tying that in will tie this and so on and so forth. So we're going to end up with Less wraps holding this on than if we tied in sort of five or six turns on each one individually. So I'm just going to trim that off. Now it's time to finish the head. So what I'm going to do is to take my super glue again and just run it on say two inches of our tying thread there, and then I'm going to wrap. My head with that. So because I didn't double my uh, jungle cock, it's important that you get a good solid turn with the super glue on. Uh, there's obviously a little bit on the front end, a little bit on the back end, and that should prevent it from slipping. So now. Finish the head, trim that off, and we need to finish that with varnish. So I'll give the glue a wee while to dry. This is one that we did a little bit earlier. See we have that sort of slim profile of the wing supported by the bucktail underneath and then we'll just this is the second coat of varnish this one's getting so Hopefully you like what you see, if you did, uh, as per usual, give us a like, subscribe, check out all the other videos on the channel, tell your friends, and until next time, tight lines, and thanks for watching.